Billy Fisk was no ordinary pilot. Born into a wealthy American family, he was an Olympic gold medalist, racing driver and movie producer. At the outbreak of war, he volunteered to fly with the Royal Air Force. He saw combat during the Battle of Britain and claimed three enemy aircraft before he himself was shot down on August the 16th, 1940. A day later, he died from his wounds and thus became the first American airman to be killed in World War II. The Battle of Britain had only just commenced when Billy Fisk joined 601 Squadron at RAF Tangmere. 601 had originally been dubbed the Millionaire's Squadron, as most of the officers were affluent young men. Although these playboys showed little regard for the discipline and routine of regular service, they were an effective fighting unit. In 1940, they found themselves right on the front line. Tangmere on the Sussex coast was a sector station within 11 Group Fighter Command. At the time, four fighter squadrons were based there, protecting important targets such as Portsmouth, Southampton and shipping in the English Channel. As the threat of invasion grew and the Luftwaffe ramped up its offensive against the Royal Air Force, Tangmere became a key location in the defence of southern England. By July 1940, 601 Squadron, now equipped with Hawker Hurricanes, had already seen a fair amount of combat. On the 20th, Billy Fisk flew his first operational sortie with the squadron. Although he had above-average flying skills, he'd only completed his first flight on a Hurricane six days earlier. Over the next 27 days, he would fly 42 operations, and as many as four in a single day. On the 11th of August, the squadron engaged an enemy formation of over 200 aircraft. Fisk claimed a Messerschmitt 110 shot down. Two days later, the Luftwaffe launched Operation Eagle Attack, a full-out assault to destroy the Royal Air Force. 601 flew three sorties that day, all before the afternoon. On the 3rd, they were tasked to intercept enemy fighters over Portland. The fighting was fierce, and Fisk claimed another 110 probably shot down and too damaged. Two days after that, he forced a German bomber into a balloon barrage. On the 16th of August, the squadron was scrambled to intercept a formation of Junkers 87s, the infamous Stukas that were heading for Tangmere. The Hurricanes were barely airborne before the combat broke out. At some point, Fisk's Hurricane was hit, possibly by return fire from one of the Stukas. His engine seized but he had enough altitude to glide back to the airfield below. He made a forced landing with the undercarriage up, but the aircraft burst into flames. He was pulled, badly burned from the wreckage and taken to hospital. Two days later, he succumbed to his injuries. Billy Fisk was a member of 601 Squadron for little over a month. In that short time, he proved his worth as a fighter pilot. His action as an American citizen who had no obligation to fight for Britain at the time is one that would be echoed by thousands of American airmen in the years to come. His sacrifice is best summed up by a memorial dedicated to him in St Paul's Cathedral, an American citizen who died that England might live. And joining me on the line now is historian and broadcaster Paul Beaver, and we've got from Washington, assistant, or the former Assistant Secretary of the United States Air Force and the President of the Billy Fisk Foundation, Kevin Billings. Gentlemen, hello, good afternoon, and thank you for coming on to the show. Uh, great pleasure to be here with Aviators Lounge. Paul, if I can come to you first. 601 Squadron, fascinated by this, formed in 1925, affluent young men, um, all from you know, the picked from a from a from a London club. This looks like something out of um, Downton Abbey. Um, <laughs> can you give us the background about Six Hundred One and how they ended up, uh, what they ended up doing during the war? Yeah, Six Hundred One Squadron, of course, is nicknamed the, the Millionaires Mob, um, and it's a part of the Auxiliary Air Force. In the nineteen twenties, uh, there was a move to form a whole series of county-based squadrons. Um, uh, 601 is County of London, 
And the aim of, of it was to create um, squadrons that were, to a certain extent, um, self-financing. But they were all determined that when the squadron was formed, they would be as good as the regulars, that they would be with their flying skills, with their navigation, all of this would be as good as the regulars. And they started first as a bomber squadron, didn't really become a fighter squadron until war clouds over Europe. And then, of course, um, 1940, uh, they get um, split into two. A flight goes to France, B flight goes to, uh, to Hawkins. Uh, they're flying um, hurricanes. Uh, they get together again after the fall of France and go to uh, be the first fighter squadron at RAF River Wallop. Um, and from there down to Tangmere, um, and if you like, to stardom in the Battle of Britain. But the millionaires mob bit disappeared, of course, um, uh, with the outbreak of war because they had other people drafted in. Kevin, um, we're talking about 1940. We're talking about 18 months before America enters the war. We're talking about the Battle of Britain and we've got an American national flying and fighting with the Royal Air Force. Where did Billy Fisk come from? What was his backstory? Well, Billy Fisk uh, grew, was born in Chicago and grew up in New York, but also in London and in France. His parents, his father was a investment banker and spent uh, time all over the world. As a, uh, a youngster, he had uh, learned to ski and ride the, the bobsled and toboggans and the Cresta at, uh, in San Moritz. And in the 1928 Olympics, he was the captain of the U.S. bobsled team. And, uh, and then in 1932, he carried the flag for the United States at the Olympic Games in Lake Placid. Uh, and then in 1936, he refused to... Um, to join the games in Germany. And what he did then was he went to, to, um, uh, to Aspen, Colorado. And there was the, uh, he and a, a mate were the founders of the first ski lodge at Aspen, Colorado. And his, his vision was to turn Aspen into what it is today. But a couple of months after the war broke out, he decided he wanted to be part of, um, wanted to be with his friends. He uh, wrote his sister and said that, um, the, the Brits have been really good to me in good times, and I'm going to be with them in their bad times. And so he uh, faked a Canadian passport and went over on the uh, Aquitania and then ended up in uh, the UK, uh, went to flying school, and then joined 601 Squadron. From your point of view, um I mean, there were hundreds of pilots who flew during the Battle of Britain. There were tens of thousands of American pilots who flew during the war. What stands out with the Billy Fisk story for you? What strikes me is he represents everything that is good about the relationship between Great Britain and the United States. What he did was, again, it was not for money. He had all the money he needed in the world. He... Um, uh, it was to be with his mates. And that is what the Billy Fisk Foundation is really about. It's about the, the personal relationships between Americans and Brits in all different levels, in, in the military, uh, at uh, the school level, and what we, whatever we can do to bring that together. And, and one of the first things we're doing is, and we've been working with the, the embassy in London, is to have a statue of Billy Fisk at the embassy. Yeah, arguably, he is the first American pilot to be killed during the war, doesn't he? Isn't he? And we are literally talking, he is number one. There are thousands of American airmen who give their lives during the Second World War after him. He is number one, isn't he? I'm rereading one of my, uh, my favorite books by Lynn Olson called Citizens of London. And it talks about, uh, there's a chapter in there that talk about the, uh, the Americans who came over uh, at, at the outset. And it, and it starts with the story of Billy Fisk. But um, when you think of, you know, Ambassador Gil Wynett, Ed Murrow, Avril Harriman, the, these folks who were there who, who believed, in, believed in England, believed in the UK, when you had uh, and, and replaced such a defeatist as uh, uh, Kennedy. It was just uh, you know, a, a remarkable shift. I mean, the, these folks believed in what was going on and they were part of 
in desperately trying to get the Americans into the war. And Fisk understood that from the very beginning. I mean, that's, again, that's part of what, um, what he gained from his friendships of, with, the, with the Brits. It was those individual friendships that, and the understanding of the shared values that led him to, to join the RAF and come over uh, at, the, at the outset. Well, Kevin, thank you for talking us through and thank you for coming on to the show. Well, you're welcome. I look forward to it. Thank you. A limited edition T-shirt featuring Billy Fisk's Hurricane is now available from Black Star Brands. The artwork by Philip West depicts Hurricanes of Number 601 Squadron from RAF Tangmere on patrol over the Sussex coast during the Battle of Britain. The t-shirts are sold in support of the Billy Fisk Foundation. Visit Blackstar Brands for more details.